Hi, I'm Strom, and here's the textures and shaders video for the Iron Baby making of. For this project, I had so many elements, I had no choice to organize my scenes carefully using the layers in 3ds Max. And now about the textures. Before painting the textures themselves in Photoshop, I first made an extensive use of the Render Surface Map tool in 3ds Max. This tool allows me to generate multiple textures, all based on the topology of my objects. I used all of them. For example, I'll show you the occlusion map, which generates pixels based on the way the geometry occludes itself. The next one is the cavity map, which generates darker pixels in the concavities. And the other one is the density map, which generates lighter pixels in the more dense part of the object. And the last example is the dust map, which generates lighter pixel for polygon facing upward and darker pixel for polygon facing downward. With this I get a good starting point for painting my textures in Photoshop. Here's the cavity map for the arms, the density map, the dust map, the occlusion map, the subsurface map, and some selection to bitmap masks. Those are based on polygon selection and I use them to separate the different color in my texture. So here is what I get after painting my bump map. For this one I started from the density map I think and just painted some lines in Photoshop. Here we're seeing my first diffuse color map because I have two of them. One is more reddish for the polygon facing the point of view and the other one is more bluish for the polygon facing at 90 degree from the point of view. And I use a curve to carefully adjust the transition between the two colors, depending on the angle of the polygon and the point of view. And then we'll see the dust map, which I easily created from the dust map generated by 3ds Max. And here is my first glossiness map, because I also have two of them, like for the diffuse. The glossiness map will uh, control how the reflection are blurred. Darker pixel would blur more, and lighter will blur less. I also control the transition between these with a curve. And here I have the scratches map, which simulates some scratch in the paint and reveal the metal behind the paint. I added the white spot where I had some uh, corner that were exposed to friction in my object. And here is the reflection map that controls the color of the reflection. I also have two of them, like for the diffuse and the glossiness. And here is the diffuse map for the body, with all the different layers of textures in Photoshop. For rendering and shading, I always use V-Ray and V-Ray materials. And for organizing and creating my shaders and textures, I use the wonderful new tool in 3ds Max 2011 called the Slate Editor. It consists of a node-based system to organize and create textures and shaders. I really wonder how I could have achieved such a complex project without this tool. One thing that I like is that you can have some nodes that input some value in other nodes and we easily see which node it will affect at a glance. If we take a look closer, we'll see on the right the node for the materials themselves. The arm material, the body material, the leg material, and the head material, and then the neck material. All of those materials have common property, so that's why they have all red links going to some common nodes. And uh, if we look at each material, I always use very blend material, because it gives me the ability to have many layers for every, all my material. I have a layer for the base, then I have a coat for the metal, which is the metal revealed by the scratch, then I have a dust layer, and each of the layer has a mask that controls how the layer will reveal the other layer underneath. If we take a look in the dust mask, you'll see the texture I painted for the dust. If we take a look at the scratch mask, we see the texture of the scratch. If we go inside the base material, we will see that it contains itself another blend material, composed of a base and a coat. It is in fact a car paint shader. 
A car paint shader is a layer of paint and a layer of varnish. So here we have the global material with the dust and the metal with their respective masks. And here we have the car paint shader. The car paint shader is composed of a pigment shader or paint shader and a varnish shader. The varnish is just put on top the paint to add a second layer of specular. If we take a look at the paint here, the paint contains a map in the diffuse. And if we take a look at the varnish shader, we'll see that it's 100% black in the diffuse and the reflection is at 100% white. And it's added as a shellac additive mod. So it's like if the black becomes transparent, like if you put it in screen mode in Photoshop, and only the specular part of the coat material will affect the car paint shader. If we look inside the paint shader, we'll see that it's composed of two color for the diffuse and one glossiness. We have the other glossiness map inside of the varnish itself. So one glossiness in the paint and one different glossiness in the coat. And here, we have the dust shader. The dust shader is the same for all the materials, so that's why you can see the red links going to all the other material. And if we take a look at the yellow nodes here, there are all values, mathematical uh, values or number, <laughs> that I use to control the different parameters in my shaders, like the amount of reflection and so on. And what's handy is that I can link those values to many different shaders. So only one value will control, for example, the amount of reflection in the red paint for the legs, the head, the body, etc. So I only have to input one number in one node to control all of those at the same time. And now I'll show you how I add some realism in my shader by studying some real life examples. Here I just took my camera and tried to understand how the light reflected in the floor depending on the angle of my camera. The window is very bright so I always see the reflection in the floor, but the paper is not so bright so if I want to see the reflection of the paper in the floor I really have to go down on the floor to see it. Here we can see a little bit of white reflection of the paper in the floor because I'm really close to the floor, but it, as soon as I go higher, I don't see the paper at all in the floor. It's by studying some example like this that I could achieve my realism by adjusting my curves and by using Fresnel reflection in my shader to control all the light change when it's hitting the surface depending on the angle of the point of view. You can see it, it here in the torso. There's a very specific way of reflecting the light with the angle. And it's by using Fresnel here. Fresnel reflection is checked and I adjust the Fresnel IOR to get a different variation in the amount of reflection depending on the angle of the polygon with the angle of the point of view. So that's all for textures and shader, we'll take a look in the next video at lighting and rendering.